We're going to talk well, about today. We're going to talk about going to court again, and and basically how we interact with the um, with the authorities that the claim to that have be. any authority over us, because we all know that all men are created equal according to the um, according to the Constitution. And if we're all created equal, then how does one man assume that he's got authority over you? I mean, it all comes to that push where if I've done something to you, if I've trespassed upon you, this is the common law, if I've trespassed upon you or I've violated a contract that we have, then you have a claim against me. But if I haven't injured you, physically injured you, or violated a contract that we've entered into, I'm free to go about my business. And how that translates to the interaction with law enforcement, et cetera, is that uh, <clears throat> when they pull you over off the road, they're they're intervening in your enjoyment and your private property. They're intervening in your uh, right to privacy, your r right to enjoy liberty. And uh, the, the, there are laws in case law and in their own codes that stipulate a warrant must issue before they can even be pulling you over. They have to have probable cause under the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, the Fourth Amendment states, and we'll have Eric read it for you, that um, <clears throat> there has to be an oath or affirmation stating that somebody witnessed a trespass. So the uh, Amendment 4, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. That does not mean suspicion. Probable cause must be supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the persons or things to be seized. So you see how specific it has to be. Um, I mean, we, I want to stress that I appreciate what cops go through, the good cops, you know, but, uh, you know. Maintaining the peace. Yeah, maintaining the peace, man. And I've met some very cool cops, uh, guys that uh, I thank the Lord for, but uh, I've had to, the unfortunate uh, experience of coming into the, uh, coming into the, uh, the realm of the, the thuggish, you know, chest out, pushing you around, uh, I've got a license to kill and you better do what I say or I'm going to hurt you, you know, and that's, uh, that's just tyranny, that's despotism, that's stormtroopers, that's Gestapo, and uh, anyway. And I would like to say that the, uh, here we have a picture of this book that's issued by the state legislature of California, the California, the constitutions of California and the United States with related and documents. I'd like it, people to notice it says the constitutions at the front. That's because <laughs> they're including the United States, yeah. yeah it's so here we have, this is for 2009 to 2010, so we're pretty current, and you can see that it's issued by the California state legislature. And so where does our law come from? Once again, we're going to go through. It comes from the Magna Carta, that's the original form of law, then the Mayflower Compact, the Declaration of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, and then you have uh, the Constitution of the United States, and then the Constitution of California, which was in 1849. And then you're going to have to say, well, gee, common law, that's pretty strange. I don't think that common law exists. And this, in spite of the fact that it was clear that there was no authority for applying the common law until it had been adopted by the legislature. So the, f the first thing they did when, the, you know, when uh, California became <coughs> a state was adopt the common law because the law that was in existence at the time was a uh, Spanish uh, civil law. And since uh, most of the attorneys and people, you know, United States uh, people, people of the United States, were used to common law, they adopted common law, and you can see down here where it states, that their little footnote states that, that here it is on April 13th, 1850. That's the date that common law was adapted. And uh, what, what the majority of people have as an interaction with police is, is uh, at a traffic stop. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, let's, let's say somebody steals your wallet. What are your chances of getting your wallet back? What are the chances of finding the person who did it when you're the only witness? And you go to the police and you go, hey, someone stole my wallet. I know what they look like. And guess what? You're never going to get that back. Well, let me tell you something real quick. Uh, when I was a <clears throat> teenager on Petrero Hill in San Francisco, we were in our home. It was late night. 
and a carload of guys came and uh, busted up my cousin's car with uh, lead pipes. Uh, we called the cops. We knew who they were. We sent the cops to their address where they were uh, domiciled on Trail Hill. And the cops rolled by their place and saw that their car was covered in shattered glass and that inside the car were lead pipes on the seats. But still, they claimed they could not even knock on the assailant's door to their domicile. They just claimed they couldn't do anything for us. We, we have a situation where, you know, somebody steals your purse or, or um, you know, breaks into your house and steals your television. It's like, you're never going to find that person. I mean, maybe they'll eventually track it down through the person went to a pawn shop and tried to sell your stereo or something. But the reality is, is that those, those cases are very hard to prosecute and hard to find because they don't have any evidence. So what are the cases that are 100% prosecutable? Hey, the policeman pulled you over for speeding. He's going to say he's the witness, right? He doesn't need to have somebody else witness it. He's the witness. He's the complainant. He's the complainant. And he said that I witnessed but a code violation. Right. Well, that's what it is, but I figured he it Because in common law, it's a trespass. And in, uh, in you know, the definition of the word crime, <coughs> we all think that a crime is a trespass. Because <coughs> in common law, a trespass is when you use physical a physical uh, attribute to um, deny somebody their rights, right? My right to not have my body uh, hit, or my right, not, you know, not to have my objects stolen. That's a trespass. When if they physically come on your property, that's trespassing. We all understand that, but we've forgotten that that under the rules of common law and even in the Bible, trespasses is, is when you physically assault or physically there's a physical nature to to your being well, injured and, and so, you be so we have the police who, who says that you uh, were speeding now is that a trespass or and who are you trespassing against mm -hmm. not the policeman he can't claim that it's an injury to him and he can't claim really that it's a violation of a contract what they said is you broke the code but well, no what they say to you is you broke the law Okay, they Which can is, say that, and that you broke the law. And it's color of law. It's color of law. And so they get a hundred percent conviction or conviction in that case. I mean, they witnessed it. They wrote the ticket, and you and you paid the price. Whereas the person that broke into your home and stole your stereo, you know, their their chances of finding that person, and even if they did find that person, convicting them of doing it are really slim. Yeah. So so let's take a look at um, at some of the uh, laws that are written, and um, we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, Jeff has uh, provided these forms up on the uh, projector for you folks to be able to read along with us. We've got EH 14601.1A. No person shall drive a motor vehicle when his or her pr driving privilege is suspended or revoked for any reason other than those listed in sections 14601, 14601.2, blah, 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 or 14601.5, blah, blah, blah. If the person so driving has knowledge of the suspension or revocation, knowledge shall be conclusively presumed if mailed notice has been given in, uh, by the department to the person pursuant to sections blah, 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 the presumption established by this subdivision is a presumption affecting the burden of proof. Oh, you, you notice that it said person, and it doesn't say uh, people of California or man or woman. It says person, and, and we know from reading Black's Law Dictionary that a person can be a corporation or yeah, a trust. Yeah. So you got to be highly suspicious of any uh, codes you read that say person. The second thing is it says, this, is, this code is a vehicle code, okay? It said EH, but it's actually VEH. It's the vehicle code 14601, and what it is is driving on a suspended license. Okay, so no person shall drive a motor vehicle. Now, what's the definition of a motor vehicle? So you have uh, vehicle code definitions, all verified. Commercial driver's license means 
a driver's license issued by a state or other jurisdiction in accordance with the standards contained in Part 383 of Title 49 of the Code of Federal Regulations.